disgusting A-level maths questions. They exist, and you're gonna have to deal with them. So, don't shy away from them. Instead, get looking at them as soon as you possibly can. So, I'm here to help. I'm gonna start this series where I just go through various disgusting maths questions, some harder than others, and I'm obviously gonna vary different topics, and they're gonna be disgusting in different ways. So, let's just go to the A2 topics on AI Tutor, and I reckon I wanna do a bit of integration today. Let's do a differential equation. So, looking at the different questions I have here, this one at the top is an A-star question. So let's have a look at this. And I reckon that looks disgusting enough. There's a few parts to it. So let's get this into the whiteboard and then fully have a read through it. So, part A says, find the integral of two to the x over two to the x plus one all squared using the substitution u equals two to the x. Okay, so, First thing that I always like to do with substitutions is I write down, you know, u in terms of x or whatever it is. It could be theta or something like that. What we want to do is get a derivative here because this dx inside the integral, I'm eventually going to want to swap this out for something to do with du. So I want to get du by dx and straight away we encounter something that's pretty disgusting. This derivative is not just simple to solve. Now you may know this derivative because there is kind of a standard formula for it but you may not. So we need to actually see how we're going to do this. I can't just directly differentiate this and I'm gonna to need to use implicit differentiation here. So going from this thing here, u equals two to the x, the trick you want to do when you have this x in the power here is take the natural log of both sides. So let's do that and I'll show you why. So I'm gonna get ln of u equals ln of two to the x. Now this is useful because I can now use a log law, the power law, to bring this x to the front. And now this is going to be a lot easier to differentiate because ln2 is just a number and then x is just an x. So we know how to differentiate a number times by x. So I'm going to do implicit differentiation here, differentiating both the left and the right hand side with respect to x. So the left hand side, this is a u. So I'm going to differentiate ln u, which goes to 1 over u. But then because I'm actually differentiating with respect to x, I'm going to times this by du by dx. If this is confusing to you, have a look over some implicit differentiation. Differentiating the right hand side is quite easy, it's just ln2 because this is a constant in front of the x. What I can now do is rearrange for du by dx. I'm going to times through both sides by u to get u ln2. What I'm now going to do is substitute the initial u in. So that is going to be 2 to the x times by ln2. Fantastic. I'm now going to times both sides by dx. So I'm going to get du equals this stuff here times by dx. And then I'm going to divide through by 2 to the x ln 2 to get dx on its own. So dx is going to be du divided by 2 to the x ln 2. So that's already a bit of work and we are not that far into the question yet. <laughs> okay, so why have I done this? because I can now substitute this straight into the integral. So the integral is now gonna become, without doing anything else quite yet, is gonna be two to the x divided by two to the x plus one all squared. So this is what we already had. And now instead of that dx, I can just write this stuff here. So times by du over two to the x ln two. Fantastic. Okay, what can I clean up? The first thing I'm seeing is I have a 2 to the x on the top and a 2 to the x on the bottom. So they can straight away go. So I've got a du divided by. And then I have this 2 to the x plus 1 all squared, which I'm going to keep here for now. Now, I also have a ln 2 on the bottom. What I would recommend is actually pulling this outside the integral because ln 2 is just a constant. So it's not going to affect my integral. I just need to remember to times it when all said and done. So instead, I'm going to write 1 over ln 2 outside the integral because then it's just a lot easier. I can focus on what's inside of it. Okay, and I've got my du and everything is there. Now I need to get this all in terms of u because that's the point. But luckily, this isn't too bad at this point because the only x now is just this and this is straight away going to a u, isn't it? Because two to the x is u. So what I have is u plus one all squared. So I have the integral of one over u plus one all squared, essentially. If it makes it easier, you can write it like this, because then you really can just see what you're integrating down here. 
So how do I do this? Well, this is a polynomial essentially in u plus one. If I was to just rewrite this as u plus one to the minus two, this is gonna help me a lot. So what I'm gonna do is obviously I still have this one over ln two outside. At this point, I can now add one to the power and divide by the new power. I'm allowed to do that because I have a u plus one here, which will act in the same way as a u essentially. So what do I have? I'm going to have u plus one, add one to the power, so I get minus one, divide by the new power. So that's just gonna be dividing by minus one. Dividing by minus one is the same as just kind of times in by minus one. So why don't I put that out here? Uh, anything else I need to do? Well, yes, I'm always gonna have a constant of substitution, constant of integration, not substitution, careful there. So a plus C, okay? And I'm not quite done yet, am I? Because obviously this integral is all to do with X, but I've given you something in terms of U. So what I now need to do is get that X back in there. So what is X? Well, U equals two to the X. So straight away, I'm gonna have the following. Minus one over lin two times by not u plus one to the minus one, but two to the x plus one to the minus one plus c. And I can clean this up slightly because this is a minus one, meaning that would go on the bottom of this fraction. So I'm gonna get the following. Lin two times by two to the x plus one plus c. Whew, okay, bit of a tough integral, but we are one out of three parts of the way through this. Fantastic. Okay, let's have a read of part b. The equation dp by dt equals two to the t p squared over two to the t plus one all squared is used to measure the growth of a population where p is the population size and t is the time in years. Given that p naught equals two ln two, so that's gonna mean p as a function of t. So in other words, when t equals naught, p equals two ln two. Find the particular solution of dp by dt, giving your answer in the form p, equals some function of t. Whew, okay. Really, really common in these differential equation questions. If in part A, you have to do an integral, I will put money on that integral being useful when you're then solving the differential equation. So it might be hidden, you know, in a few other things, but I can guarantee you this, it's gonna help you out. So writing this differential equation, what do we do to solve them? Well, we use the method of separation of variables. And it does what it says on the tin. We need to separate the variables. I'm gonna get all my t's on one side with a dt, and I'm gonna get all of my p's on the other side with a dp. So what do I have here? Okay, the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is bring this dt up to the right-hand side, because then my left-hand side can be the p's and my right can be the t's. So without doing anything else, I'm just gonna times by dt. You can kind of treat derivatives as fractions here which is nice. I'm not saying they are fractions, we don't wanna get into that, but you can treat it as if it is one in this case. So what can I do now? Well, I've got a P here, fantastic, but I've got a load of T's here as well. So the T's are good on this side, but the P wants to be on this side. So how am I gonna get that P squared to the other side? I'm gonna divide both sides by P squared. So I'm gonna get one over P squared dP, equals two to the t over two to the t plus one all squared dt. That d was horrible. So what I can now do is integrate both sides because look, I integrate this side with respect to p and this side with respect to t. So that is why separation of variables is so useful. Okay, I've got two integrals I need to do here. So let's first of all consider this and then we can think about the other side. So just considering the integral of one over p squared, I'm actually gonna do what I did last time and I'm gonna rewrite this as a p to the minus two. Fantastic. So I'm gonna net, this is a polynomial, so I'm gonna add one to the power, divide by the new power. So I'm gonna get p to the minus one, divided by minus one, and then a plus c, okay? Uh, the right-hand side, hmm. Does this look familiar in any way? What did we do in part A? We solved the integral of two to the x 
over 2 to the x plus 1 all squared. And we've got the answer in terms of x. Well, now we've just got the same thing in terms of t, right? So we can do this. So the left-hand side here, which is going to be minus p to the minus 1 plus c, is just going to equal, and now let's actually look what the answer to part a was. It was this, minus 1 over ln 2, 2 to the x plus 1, all plus c. In other words, this here is going to be minus 1 over ln 2, and then instead of 2 to the x plus 1, it's just going to be 2 to the t plus 1, because this integral is now in terms of t. And then plus another arbitrary constant. So it'd probably be a bit silly to say t c here, because I've, I use c on the other side. And then I could just take c and there wouldn't be a constant. Why don't we use d? But then, in fact, you don't even need to do this. Because imagine I was to now take c from both sides, for example. I would get the following. Minus, I'm going to write this as a 1 over p, why not? Equals all of this stuff here. And then plus d minus c. But d is an arbitrary constant and c is an arbitrary constant. So if I take one arbitrary constant, take it away from another, well, that's just going to give me another arbitrary constant, isn't it? So I don't even need to kind of keep all of these. Why can't I just say, well, why don't we call it e, for example? E is probably a bad word because we know that e is kind of a number. Why don't we call it g? It genuinely doesn't matter. Any, any letter. Because now this means, okay, well, this is just an arbitrary constant. Yeah, it's defined as these other two, but that doesn't matter. So you have that freedom with constants here. Okay, we've now integrated. What do we now need to do? So we need a particular solution here, which means that we need to get the value of this constant. So how do we do that? With a piece of information. And the information that we have been given here is that when t equals 0, p equals 2 ln 2. Okay, so I'm going to sub both of these things in and try and tidy things up. So what am I going to get here? I'm going to get minus 1 over 2 ln 2 equals minus 1 over just ln 2 times by 2 to the t, which is 2 to the 0, plus 1, and then plus this constant, g. Okay, so still quite a lot going on. Let's keep this here. 2 to the 0 is 1, and then 1 plus 1 is 2. Maths. Meaning that, look at this. Minus 1 over 2 ln 2 equals minus 1 over 2 ln 2 plus g. If I add 1 over 2 ln 2 to both sides of the equation, I'm just going to get g equals 0. So that at least makes our lives a bit easier, right? So now let's plug this into the equation here, and I'm going to want to get p in terms of t. So I currently have the following. Minus 1 over p equals minus 1 over not 2 ln 2, just ln 2, times by 2 to the t plus 1, and we know that g is 0 now. So the first thing is, I can get rid of these minuses, you know, times both sides by minus 1 to get 1 over p equals 1 over ln 2, 2 to the t plus 1, and then I can flip both sides. So I'm going to get p equals ln 2 times by 2 to the t plus 1. One. Whew, that's part B again. Pretty big. There were a few things we need to do there. Okay, what does part C say? Hopefully this is going to be a bit smaller than the other two. Find the value of P after five years, giving your answer to the nearest integer. Okay, so this, now that we have this equation, is just a simple case of substitution. So all I need to do is say, well, look, when T equals five, what does P equal? P is going to equal ln two, so straight to the calculator here times by 2 to the t, so 2 to the 5, plus 1, and that is going to get me 22.87, and then dot, 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 and then we want our answer to the nearest integer. So to the nearest integer is going to be 23.